I don't know. I mean, genuinely, if it won't do anything, then what do we do with it? Mm -hmm. At some point, this is my favourite tea. Mm -hmm. Oh my oh, goodness, that's really quite it's... weird. What is it? The wow. thing I can smell it. What is the thing? It's Taiwanese Please. milk oolong. Wow. Oh, yes, it does smell like sure boiled milk, huh? doesn't yeah. it? <laughs> mm. Oh, I so tried to get milk all along. Mm. Absolute. No, it, it just too. It smells like shortbread. Oh, yeah, wow. exactly. It's buttery. It smells like shortbread. That. Get, if you can get that, that'd be great. Yeah, there's a seal of extract of milk all along. Just with a little trivin. Okay, that's going to be the binature. <laughs> can you reach binature some in. of those from in that one? Then, but yeah, the ones with the the thin pointy ones. So it's a neo gourmand. And Neo gourmand, as opposed to an old gourmand. Yeah. Let's see. So, this is one Harry made earlier. Oh yeah, it's, it's nutty. It smell, smells like. Oh, here's I also nutty. want to make mm. one called um, Gersine Parisienne, <laughs> <laughs> which would be like. Gersine. Oh, that's really nice. Uh, it, it could be that, I think. Yeah. Like croissants and stuff. Okay. Um. We'll um. Mm -hmm. That's cracking on then, I'm assuming. Yeah. But um, wow. what are the ground rules? <laughs> we what? We What's this? We, well, this is we've already this started. Is, this is going We're on. Starting. Yeah. It's already happening. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So this is what happens when we film. Uh, at some point, I just check that we are actually filming, and Arthur says yes. So um, we are going to talk about whatever we want to pull out of the box and smell, and give our views. Okay. Mm -hmm. For they are at least as valuable as everyone else's. Uh -huh. <laughs> I think. I think is, is the score. Um, so I have got some new things. Harrison has always turns up with a box of. Well, I, I, I did also bring a bad patchouli because I wanted to show you how bad one was. That's but, a good place to start, I think. Yeah. yeah. Well, I won't name names. Okay. I just wasn't very impressed right. with it. Yeah. I don't know, it just, just feels mean. Um, I feel like if we start here, then it can only go yeah, up. So. Yeah, it's true. But the, oh, it's got something on the end. Yes, it has. It got, name, name, it has it has it made a bad patchouli. No, it's not a bad. No, no, no. It's a, it's bad, a bad patchouli, patchouli oil. oil. Oh, I see. Have you got any good patchouli essential oil on the table? Uh, not on the what table. What makes make That's like a bad? I mean, because we always hear like this is the finest. Mm. Like what? What is like? I mean, would somebody ever be like, this is a second rate patchouli, but it's still kind of okay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, wait, wait, I should say bad in my view. Like, okay. Brooke might love it. Well, I might. What, I, are, you, I, what are you implying? I think it's <laughs> like strange metallic note that I'm not a fan of compared to normal patchoulis. It's quite sort of. It smells almost like damp mint. Mm. Could it be, yeah. could it be mm. what the patchouli itself is grown in? It, the terroir Because like if you grow yeah. if you grow a tomato with seaweed fertilizer, it's going to taste better than if you really used to, yeah. Well, it's going to taste seaweed. Yeah, anyway. If you grow <laughs> flamingos with pink see, food, and they go pink. It, yeah, it, it is very grubby and rough. Mm. Yeah, but I I, I quite like, like it. That. But then yeah. that's the MD version. That's meant to be the one that's been molecularly distilled. Oh. yeah. So if you compare that to the Abbevier oh. MD, or yeah. the Cur, the Cur. Yeah. very, very clean. So it's almost yeah. like, it, I dread to think what it was before this. I see what you mean. I should have given that info, yeah. Unless they we did the molecular... Them down. Yeah, okay. Unless they did the molecular distillation and put the clean bit somewhere else. <laughs> yeah, this, this is the... This the, is the, the they metal, just didn't clarify like, oh, which the bit they bit. meant. Yeah. yeah. I suppose so. Right. Um, so, patchouli sal. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this is French for dirty. Um, just in case you were wondering. Uh, I better turn my phone off as well. It's making noises. Taking it noises. Okay, so you wanted to smell these tomato, the tomato collection I've got, did you? Yes. So I've got a tomato leaf pure absolute, it says here, which I got mm. a long time ago from. That's. It's, it's the right colour, but I didn't, this, yeah. we know about this brand, don't we? And it's. Um, it's because there's Faith International on it. I mean, and it smells like spinach, absolute. It does, doesn't it? It doesn't really smell like tomatoes. So, so what we have here is the tomato natural from Robert Tay. Hmm. Oh, well. So it's just like not a good one. Well, no, it's natural, I, I, but I've no, I, someone told me there isn't oh, really a yeah. tomato leaf natural. Yeah, and really? Yeah, but then I don't know who to believe, so we'll see. But they have tomato leaves have such a smell. Because mm. the, the, the Robertay one smells oh, more sorry. like how I remember right. tomato leaves to be. 
Mm. Dude, it made me sneeze. Ah, yeah. So this is, this is the Robote, which I've... I mean, I sort of hate the carbon footprint on this because I bought it from Perfumer's Apprentice in the US oh, because wow. I needed a small quantity. Mm. Mm. And um, that's the way it is. That's beautiful. And the, the, the Givco, not a fan. As people yeah, know. the Juvco has been discontinued, has it not? But I have this tiny bit left, I think. Well, we were saying on the thing the other day that discontinued might mean there's still probably like hundreds of kilos left. That's a possibility. Um. Yeah. So why would they discontinue it? It might have something in it which is now has been restricted or more in the. For a 49th amendment, they might have to change it. Or well, they weren't making enough this money is a from it. Yeah. Well. Or it's gone out of fashion. Yeah. The yeah. Sambos smells kind of like almost like a shupra by itself. Yeah. Yeah. So this is um, uh, tomato leaf givco 224 um, yeah, like by Shibodong. I, I, the, like Much like the green tea givco, this is like being force fed some sort of laundry fabric conditioner. <laughs> it's, you can imagine it being in a tomato it's a shampoo. Image. Yeah. <laughs> it's not even tomato, it's like just, um, uh, you know the sort of uh, nose scratchy feeling from Triplau and like uh, oh, very yeah. strong greens. Yeah. It doesn't smell very tomato-y. No. I mean, it's got, like the green teas you've got for me, it makes an almost perfect fig note, a fig perfumery note. Oh, but yeah. I don't think it's, I wouldn't use it for green tea, but I would use it for green other things. Mm. Well, exactly, mm. and it's far more powerful, I suspect, than the, the natural, in the sense that you could put like one drop of one percent, and it could completely transform a. Very, it's probably why I don't like it because it's not very forgiving. Yeah, I think that, that if you've got things that where one drop transforms the fragrance, you remember just to use the one drop, or you divide, you you divide well, one it drop at one percent, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and use half a drop. Mm -hmm. um, what else? Oh, shall I? So the the. Okay, here's a tricky one. I just put Tabarone, yeah. which is a, a Cinerome tobacco base. I put it into a fragrance which an American company is making up for me, and they can't get it in the US. So I'm going to have to send over some of mine. Perfumer's Apprentice can't get it. Wow. So I'm going to have to send them some of mine, because you know, I bought a kilo, because I thought... I've always just used natural tobacco. Mm. Um, and I haven't used any of the tobacco. Yeah, I don't really see it. I, so I make, I make a tobacco base, but... Where would this come but from, but Tabarone? This, is it this synthesized is, from tobacco? No, it's made up of... Here you go. It's made up... Yeah, I was going to say quite caramelly. Yeah, oh. it smells like an actual tobacco. It smells like, like um, an, an old packet, packet of sweets. Mm. Oh. Uh, liquor sweets. That's okay. okay, isn't it? Yeah, it's slightly less... It's like it, I wouldn't say that this was as a as an ex heavy smoker. I would not say that this was tobacco. I wouldn't recognise it. You remember there used to be like fruit flavored pipe tobacco. Yeah, mm. this is that's what got me started. Yeah. I, so I think yes, start smoking from pipe. Yeah, so nice. it's animalic as well. This yeah. really nice acetate note and paracetamol. I still have eaten this, and I smell it. Yes, I think it's very reminiscent of beautiful tobacco fragrances, yeah. with the yeah. quite sweet ones, quite ambery ones. It's yeah. really nice. Uh, urinal really like that. as well. <laughs> Do you smell your in that? It always has to taste. Don't smell your in that. <laughs> no, but it's, it's a dark, kind of urinous tobacco, isn't it? See, I've never visited you right now. Urinous tobacco. <laughs> but, but whenever you get honey, it's always a danger, because they share a lot of the same molecules. What, yeah, honey and... Yeah. yeah, honey and pee. Uh, really? Hence yeah. dirty honey. But isn't it just, I mean, I just, because mm, Le like Lisa it, yeah. um, mm. uh, sent me, you know, people send me things, oh, I like that. So then I think of things to put them in, so I put them in this particular fragrance and... And what did you, what was the fragrance like? It's the third Hobbit one for Tyler oh, D, for the Miss Goodsco, oh. yeah, mm. solid. So it had to be formulated to work in beeswax. Yeah, and that would work in beeswax. Yeah. I, I it smells like beeswax. Didn't, didn't just use that though. No, of course. There was but that, was, like, if, even if you did, that would yeah. be pretty good. Yeah. There was more going on. Um, so, that's the tabarum. What else have you got? Uh, we could do a, a folded lemon. Uh, uh, what, okay. Should we maybe do it thematically? How does one fold a lemon? Well, exactly. <laughs> it's this very citric origami. Um, 
It's a, <laughs> it's a type of you should um, launch that. process where you effectively remove terpenes from a citrus. You, terpenes are he heavily, uh, you, sorry, you citrus. You smell a lot stronger. You, you take you take off the the terpene fractions or as much as you want. Yeah. Effectively, it becomes more concentrated. So they call it folding. So you, oh, wow. There's some law about how you describe it that I forget, but um, tenfold means something like it's equivalent to doing something ten times. Um, yeah. Someone can oh. correct me. It, anyway. smells, it smells five times. So lemon fivefold will smell five times more lemony. Right. It takes up less space. I should okay. Get three. And, and, and the reason I got it is because I do a lot of candles and um, it tends to work better in when you're burning it because the terpenes don't burn very well. Limonene can give off this black smoke. Um, so that's why I got hold of it, but it's very juicy. You'll be doing that while I'll be getting the lid off the greens of Lucy. This smells like lemon sweets. Mm -hmm. It's very sherbetty. Yes, please. Thank you. Thanks. Ooh, oh, yeah. It is. it is fizzy, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it's properly fizzy. Yeah, it's it's like the it inside come? of it, it's called, well, it's called Lemon 10X. Lemon 10X. Yeah. X meaning the mathematics for times. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Just like, not 10 kisses. It might be 10 kisses. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 10 lemon kisses. Oh, thank you. Yeah, sorry, I like that one. Um, did you make that? Or is it no, no, material? that's a material, yeah, oh, okay. yeah. Um, okay, yeah, anything. Do. So another, do another fruity style thing. Okay. This is called, uh, it's a melon material, rather than lemon, melon. Um, called Cis 6 non and null And I'll let you think what you smell. Did you, did, in amongst that noise, did you just say it was melon? Yeah. Okay, just checking. Yeah. There were a lot of syllables. And it's late and I'm trying to keep mm. Thank you. So for me, this is the smell of um, Thanks. Well, blue head and shoulders. Why do you point at me when you say that? <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like, yeah, you, feel like you, you could be an advert for head and shoulders. Oh wow, yeah. thanks. <laughs> yeah. Um, Given that you don't have an advert. Yeah, yeah, no, I don't, I don't, exactly. I don't. Like, like you see yeah. from 30 so centimetres without <laughs> visible flakes. <laughs> like see, to yeah, me, no, I don't know blue head and shoulders. You, you know how salt doesn't have a smell? Mm. This tastes, this smells, uh, to me, as if you've taken lemon and put an awful lot of salt on it, and mm. then... Uh, the melon, not me the lemon. Melon. Melon. Taken yeah. a melon okay. and put a lot of salt on it, and then tasted it. It ah, smells yeah, like yeah, you mean. melon at the seaside to me. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say, why could be, melon? because I use it... What's the melon and the lemon? The lemon and the melon yeah. together? Oh, here we go. Oh, that's the tambourine. Mmm. So yeah, I do use it in like small amounts to kind of add juiciness. Um, it's very powerful. That's one percent solution, by the way. Mm. Wow. Um, so yeah, non anal, non anal. Sorry, cis six non anal at one percent. Um, yeah. Salty melons. It's a good point about saltiness, though. That's I didn't think. see that. What does the cis six mean? This means it's a double bond, and it's in the sixth sixth position along when you count from the first carbon. It's chemistry. It's chemistry. Is when the things have a double bond, they're not just connected once, they're connected extra strongly to each other. And we're talking about carbon atoms being joined to each other. It's just to distinguish it from other versions of that might be the same shape. There so might be one with yeah. a single bond that behaves differently or smells differently. Yeah, so. so actually, you remember the cucumber aldehyde? The one that's like, smells like cucumbers? Yeah. That's the same number of carbons, but there's another double bond. Because the name of that one is um, trans two cis six non diienal, so it's got two double bonds. So this one's got the one double one middle. Uh, no, sorry, one double one near the end. Uh -huh. Cis six non null. So you count along to six, and there's double one there. On the cucumber aldehyde, it's trans two cis six. So the second carbon's got one double bond pointing the other direction, and the sixth has still got the same one. So it's actually Slightly different, and yet it smells like cucumber rather than melon. And this is after two gins. <laughs> uh, yeah. Isn't this? And they imagine this, what it's like with that this, egg, this like sweet three gins. Oh, no, no, it's a suppository. No, a suppository of knowledge. <laughs> yeah, but is it, there's a big, there's an amazing thing there that, like, you know, that you that you can pick that up. Mm. You oh, know, no, molecular differences. You can. No, I'm, oh. I'm talking about your nose. 
Um, yeah, your so olfactory you sure, sense. Something. Is it because it's, it basically makes the molecule a different shape and therefore fits into a different receptor? Yeah, yeah. I mean, isn't that just incredible? It is, isn't it's the really human body the same amazing? Of carbons just pointing in a slightly different direction. Yeah, and therefore it goes from cucumber to melon. Yeah, and you need an electron microscope to view the atoms mm. and the <laughs> molecules. You need, but yet your body can do it with your nose. Mm. Yeah, it's amazing. Yes, it is. You're right. I think sometimes we get so... Yeah. We forget the big picture of it there, I think. Or the very small picture, yeah. as, it, as it happens. The tiny picture, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Ooh, that's not what I was expecting. Wow. I was, what were you expecting? Me to I thought it would be oh. the uh, different queer one, the queer 175004. And this is Queer de Russie 601660 from Cinerome. Mm. Don't like it? Ooh, I think it smells like it's aldehydes so and cade. <laughs> wow. I always like that. I like it. Your nose I, like much. The, I, I really like, like it. that combination of aldehydes and, and dark things. Like. But I wonder what. Now I know that this is how, what they, they think Queer de Rossi smells like. Because I don't know if you can speak about the Queer de Rossi originally, what it was. I don't know much about the history. It was a fin like a, a way of. Curing the leather to make it waterproof, wasn't it? Yeah, and then but then there was a, a fragrance by Chanel or something. Yeah, Chanel had one mm. prior to the one that they do now. Yeah, but, but it smells like this. Ah, uh, no, it smells. The original one smells a lot darker than this. Okay. A lot more potent. But I suspect then Queer de Rossi became a style. Well, and Queer de Rossi, yeah, that. and Queer de Rossi bases have been a thing for quite. And a long I don't time. think Chanel didn't do the first one. I think yeah. they kind of were around in fragrance from probably the 1850s, I imagine. Well, the, well, the thing is, it's a, tend to be, it's a bit later because it was really isobutyl quinoline that changed the whole uh, yeah, leather thing, and that was the early 1900s. Yeah. So what you had was a cords of patchouli, um, isobutyl quinoline, and white birch, and that was kind of the original leather accord, and then other things were based around that. So that became like the central early leather record. While we're on smoke then. Yeah. That is really so nice. Smoke. Yeah, you want some of these? I have them ready. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, you got some. Um, this is a so new... Yeah, oh, and when were quinolins discovered? Sorry. Sorry. Uh, there, there are lots of other quinolins, but actually the one used these days is sec butyl quinolin, so it's not quite the same. It's called isobutyl quinolin, mm -hmm. but it's not. But, what's that, about 19... Oh, or something. I think because Knees 10 was Oh yeah, very, yeah, that was very early. Yeah, I would have to look it up, I'm not certain, but it was a bit, I'm pretty sure it was 20th century, but very early, mm -hmm. that it started being used in perfumery. What you got, Harrison? So prepare yourself. Okay. Um, <laughs> it's a very dark material, not just in colour. Wow. And it's... Um, ah, okay, so I think I know what this is, because I think you've given me some. Uh, have I? Well, I guess I've got labdanum. It's a, it's a labdanum that's been processed in a funny it's way. The it's the hard It's hard close hard to it. Okay. It's close to it, but it's actually a, a bit cheaper. Um, it's called Cyst Abs SUV. It's made mm -hmm. by Alvier. Um right. And I should have realised before they, before I bought the hydrocarbon. Right. Do <laughs> I not have five kilos of this? No. What have I got? I've got an Alvier Cyst. Oh no. I've Cyst got Abs. This abs, all right. Mm. They, they, it's, just, it's still the same plant, but they've done something to it. Okay. Um, to make it smoky and and it's using a lot of oud, uh, modern oud things. Like if you look at Dior leather oud, one of the giant things. Mm. Yeah. Um, it's mm. like basically this. Okay, that is. I gorgeous. suspect. Yeah, amazing. Mm. That's smoky, smoky. Do you get a fishiness? No, good. <laughs> <laughs> no, good. Some people say they get fishiness from any sort of labdanum. Processed labdanum extracts. Why? I don't know. Like, like an ammonia note. I had maybe this theory that they smell smoky and they're thinking smoked salmon. That's the only link <laughs> yeah, I did like in somebody's head. Mm -hmm. But what is this card again? It's called Cyst Abs. S E V. C I S T E Cyst. It's the same plant as labdanum. But then it's S E V. I don't know what S E V stands for, yeah. but um, Abs it's a is process. Absolute. Um, Brooke, you should have perfumes that we smell as well. Right. Do you have any perfume? Yeah, but we smell? didn't tell. But we no, I wouldn't have brought some if I had. had. Anyway, if I had do. Known. do you want to smell um, the pineapple? Ooh, this is on the yes. pool, isn't like. Doesn't he? No. Okay. Oh, I can't remember it. Oh. 
pool cane. Uh, yeah. Well, we'll soon see why. Mm. No, it's just, but, uh, the reason I say this is because like it's my only reference when whenever I think of Robert A. Pineapple Bass, I remember right. Paul saying about how I didn't like it. Oh, okay. so it just popped out. Well, um, they, these are okay. So these are natural. They are. Uh, as I like to call them, Frankenstein naturals, because they're made of parts of other live things. Uh, sewn together. Sewn together to make something that smells like... So it's it's made from... Let's put the thing back in. It's made from uh, natural isolates, which are basically chemical. I mean, the, anything's chemicals, but natural isolates... It, it, People who only use naturals can use them, but they've been through pretty much all the same processes as all the other chemicals to make mm. them. They're not made by squeezing pineapples. I so. got almost a pain in my ear when I smelled that. It was so like sinus clearing. It's wow, parmesan. Yes, I found it quite cheesy too. Yeah. Well, parmesan and pineapple have a lot. To it, it could have been <laughs> my first whiff yeah. was parmesan. Definitely, oh, wow. you have to be very careful. And of course, parmesan has um, butyric acid. It smells like sick. Mm. So you have to be very careful when you're making a pineapple fragrance that it just doesn't smell like. Vom. You know, like yeah. late, so yeah. early in the morning on a Sunday that. night down. Leicester but also, Square. it feels like it's coming out of your nose. Nose, <laughs> nose vomit. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's it's so the main one of the main pineapple volatiles is ethyl butyrate, and I wonder whether some in some parmesans you get that as well. Mm. As a butyric acid. Oh, I, uh, there's another character for our story. You know, the story we're going to write featuring Ethel Maltol and Vera Moss. <laughs> Violet Leaf. Oh, of course. And, yeah. uh, well, I thought some other ones, but I forgot who they are. They'll come to me. Yeah. Violet Leaf. Evening Primrose. <laughs> Sicily 3 hexanol. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, that's what it's short for. <laughs> yeah. It turns out all this time. Um, do you want to do the hydrofleur? Yeah. So I had a bit of a, a shop. I was looking for um, materials which are, are less damaging environmentally. So things which biodegrade nicely. And we got uh, an email from BLH saying, try this, this, this and this. <coughs> Um, so are there things that take a long time to break down then? Yes, and there are some things that don't seem to break down at all. Really? Like there are some musks. Really? Yeah, so some things just continue. But there's not, there's not necessarily to say that they do harm. Yeah. They're just there. The world, the world could just continue to smell more and more of musk. Mm. A bit like when we don't see the wash the, the <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's like, so, but nevertheless it's like, well, will it go, will it not? So musk, uh, romandolide and xenolide mm. are readily biodegradable. So get kind of moving over to that because. And what do those, those smell choice. like? And what is this called again? Like I'm sorry. Of, this one is called hydrofleur or hydrofleur. Doesn't have much of a smell. Two seven nine. Maybe it smells of like meringues. Well, it probably needs diluting before we really get much from it. Mm. So mm. This it, is it. it. The weird thing is that a lot of these. Um, marine materials or floral marine materials smell kind of eggy as well in a strange way I mm -hmm. um, don't know what the cause is but it happens as well with the one called um, Melozone it smells like the inside of meringue and also um, this one called Maritima which is like it's like marine pyridine and it's uh, it smells like either wet dog or inside meringue it's like um, or it's unbeaten, really unbeaten egg whites Mm. Yeah, this it's just taking a while to escape. It's a I nice, think, it's really nice fragrance. I don't see the fleur or the hydro. Well, you see, because I've decided, because it's called hydro fleur, I've decided that it smells like water lilies. Okay. So I just want to mm. make a, I want to make a water lily face. Although Louise from Monmouth Botanical, she went canoeing yesterday mm. down a a stream, mm. or, and she said into a puddle. Well, she met she met some water lilies, and she wrote and said that she had um, she paddled up to them to smell them, right? Because um, they were there, okay. and and I have a message here somewhere that she said it didn't. It's not something like ginger. She was really surprised. Oh, who'd you go? No, she said she saw these little lily pads, smelled like sherry, <laughs> sherry alcohol smell. 
very surprised she expected floral. So mm, okay. then she realised she'd spilt the sherry in the front yeah. of the boat. <laughs> <laughs> the boat. I know, but, the, but you know, when when how often do you get a chance to smell a water lily? Yeah. It's true. It's true. Mm. So and just this morning. So yeah, that. Um, so I've got the Bois d'Ensence. Oh, you, you smell, smell that, that one? Oh, yeah, wow. I thought you might. I think I maybe it was my one. It. it was before, but I didn't buy any. I only meant to buy the apple because I might have this project on. Oh, oh if this project happens, it's going to make me so happy. What is it? It's an art thing with somebody whose work I very much admire, but I can't tell you yet because I don't want to jinx it because I'm hoping <laughs> it's happening. But if it happens, then it's to do with Kent and orchards and things. Mm -hmm. So I bought the apple because uh, I already have the cucumber and the mm. apricot, but... Um, are, those are those Kent specific things? Oh, well, the apples I thought. No, I had those from before okay. when I was using <laughs> them. But, uh, but the mm. rubber tay things. But um, I thought, you know, if you're going to pay all the extra and the dangerous goods shipping and the everything else, mm. then you might as well go shopping. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I got... That's why I got the pineapple and the tomato and the thank you and the pear and the raspberry that we have mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. And so Bois d'Ensons, it is a frankincense cold distilled with yeah, cedarwood. Cedarwood, yeah. Um, oh yeah. And oh, that's nice. So cold distillations are really Ooh. interesting. I have. Oh, you've got to smell the miti atta. Mm. Oh, oh yes, yes, yeah. yeah. So that's cold distillation of clay pots with sandalwood. Mm. Could distill distilled thirteen times mm. so you make sure it gets nice and pottery smelling. But there's there are some cheaper versions which are just done with D P G but I got the sandalwood <laughs> from Mysore. It just I just got it into my head I wanted to smell it. So yeah. like, next thing you know you own a kilo. Mm. Oh and then there's the jasmine base. Because oh, yeah. mm. I've never owned a jasmine base, I just always used jasmine. Mm. But it's come to the point where the jasmine's. It's very expensive. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, and it's it's gone a bit. It's all gone a bit nuts. And but quite, it's quite restricted. Well, the sand is quite restricted. Yeah, uh, some back is less restricted. Oh than really? The, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah. But yeah, what? Uh, this is probably restricted too. I've got to move yeah. up. But uh, the more I'm encouraging people to make things that smell like jasmine and and experiment, mm. I don't want to make people spend shed loads of money when there are chemists out there making mm. including your good smell well, perfume is your chemist but you, you, oh. you make bases yes yeah, true you make bases um but when people are making bases which are you know, i don't mind whether it's nature or chemists. oh really mm -hmm. yeah i wonder if i have any bases i've done the famous tuberose base but if i if famous i obviously i didn't know here we go no, I had someone coming to me asking for the bases for oh, the yeah. last video, so thank you. Oh well, yeah, good. M so make them into a cult oh, thing. Oh, so gorgeous. Yeah, I was impressed. Mm. Mm. I've got jasmine in the garden now. Really? Yeah, there's this oh. plant, the plant it grows all over the blinking place, but it very rarely bothers with flowers. <laughs> and this year, suddenly this morning, I went out to pick some currants, because I only... I've only got jasmine and currants basically in the garden. It's and a fig tree now, but yeah. <laughs> Useful. And foxes, of course. Yeah. Um, went out to get some breakfast. And there's the jasmine. And it bloomed. Yeah, oh. it's there. It's flowers. Oh. Mm. Right. Right. And so what kind of jasmine grows in England? That's a very good question. I think it's the official one. Yeah, I think it's... Really? Yeah. I used to have jasmine growing down my stairwell. Yeah, I remember. You had yeah. like a yeah. plant cave. It's not, no longer yeah. with us, sadly. Why would happen? You moved house. No, I got rid of it. Yeah. Just threw it away. I euthanised it. I need to go. <laughs> I need to go now. <laughs> you, you do. You need to leave. So just, yeah. Just, just say, before we throw you out the window. No, it it, it yeah. was it was uh, it wasn't in a particular good state. It didn't actually enjoy living in a stairwell. No, I was going to say it wouldn't yeah, have been that, that happy being indoors. No. Um, I'll, I'll give you something to smell with the jasmine. Okay, thank you. Um, this is a warm scent solution. A, a material called creme fleur. Uh, Creamy flowers. And it's uh, very very strong. Like a very hyper strong lactone. Milky lactone. Mm. Mm. And it really makes the jasmine bloom. Mm. Milky lactone jasmine. Mm. I wish like the combination of this reminds me of Chanel's gardenia, but I mean with oh. jasmine obviously, but 
it has it's quite a milky exuberant mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. smell. Yeah, so, and you get this petal character. Mm. So what Arthur will just do now is kind of fade uh, uh, gradually out and just leave us here, smelling <laughs> for the next several hours, is because he has to go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but but we might have Let episode two one day. Oh, sorry. There you go. Was it oh, two massive together. Oh yeah. Right, over. Lovely. Thank you. Oh, I can show Brooke my lychee and patchouli. Oh. Okay. Which is a weird one. Mm-hmm. Well, weird from you, Harry. Mm. I still I tell people about photocopy and malfunction. Oh <laughs> yeah. I have that. Still I have one that of my favourite. Yeah. I have to smell oh, that makes it. Called Aldambre. Aldambre. I'm getting some. Oh, alright. I don't mm. have any of that, do I? Really no, I got as a really gross passion fruit smell. Really? Yeah, okay. like, like almost like rotting. Yeah, kind of.